Hearing Akoma tell her that her personal preferences were as important as his, she felt so happy. It reminded her of the conversation they had a moment ago in the cafeteria about how they could acquire the best weapon for her. At the time, Akoma explained that leveling up is more about the quality of monsters rather than the number, so from now on they would try to hunt powerful monsters to level up quickly. However, since her class, Shaman, lacks firepower, this could be very difficult for her. Fortunately, she could use a high-level staff to make up for the lack of firepower. Concluding, he said, I want to make our next portal raid a place where we can make a lot of money so you can buy the high-quality staff, since the benefits that a weapon can give you are paramount. Seeing how determined Akoma was to get her a weapon, she felt sorry for not being competent enough, making him go that far for her. But Akoma reassured her that it was to his advantage to strengthen his comrade. With all this in mind, he searched for a portal that would meet the criteria and found one called, The Grave of the Old King. On the internet, it was said to be an undiscovered portal found the other day, and its item drop rate was unusually high. Akoma, however, knew that this was a special portal called a rare portal. A rare portal is the portal which has many rare drop items. Luckily, until now nobody knew that the grave of the old king was a rare portal yet, so he could use this opportunity to slowly and completely retrieve them all. Not only could he get good money from selling those rare drops, but he could also find useful items as well. Unaware of his plan to rob all the treasure of the old king's grave, Satsuki agreed with him to explore this portal next. Remembering all of this, Satsuki rejoiced, she couldn't help but feel that Akoma spoils her. The next day, in the grave of the old king, Akoma and Satsuki arrived. Inside the portal, it looked like an old castle. As they explored, they were attacked by a level 29 skeleton knight out of nowhere. Akoma was quick enough to block it in time. Using his skill gravity moiety to increase his speed, Akoma charged at the skeleton knight and landed a clean attack, but the skeleton didn't break down as expected. Understanding that his blunt attacks weren't very effective against this undead monster, he immediately commanded Satsuki to cast a magic attack on it while he dodged its sword attack. Satsuki responded to his command, casting her favorite spell, Shadow Ball, destroying the skeleton knight instantly and leaving behind a magic crystal and a drop. Satsuki was very happy as this monster seemed to have dropped something else with the magic crystal. When Akoma picked up the drop item, the system identified this knife as a D-class item, Relic Knight of Ancient Times, a mysterious knife that fires blue light and adds 8 attack power. This pleased Akoma, and he said happily, Excellent, we are quite lucky today. We can sell this for around $2,500. This price simply shocked Satsuki. To her, it was a huge sum of money, causing her to exclaim in disbelief, Is it really worth that much? Akoma replied, yeah, it is. After all, there is demand for these kinds of weapons even when they don't have any additional effect. His confirmation meant that she didn't mishear him before, but this money was already too much for her. To him, it didn't seem that much, making her wonder how much money he was aiming to get. As he had said that they needed to come here to earn a lot of money for her weapon. Unable to contain her curiosity, she ended up asking him. He replied that he hoped for at least $20,000, as it would take that much to find a strong usable weapon. Therefore, they needed to utilize this rare opportunity presented to them. After all, rare portals are not everyday occurrences. He added, transporting the items will also take time, so we'll spend three days exploring and moving out items. Satsuki was shocked to hear this sum of money. It was simply too much for her, but more surprisingly, he was hoping to earn all of this money in just three days. Wasn't this money the average annual salary for common people? She suddenly felt like she had stepped into a brand new world, the crazy world of rich people. At this moment, Akoma heard a battle nearby and decided to go there and see what was going on. On the other side, a party of three was engaged in a brutal battle against an ancient mummy-like monster. After exchanging a few blows, the mummy monster was completely pulverized, leaving it with little health so that one more attack would put an end to it. At this point, 
A knight in the party addressed a blonde-haired girl, Big Sister Hoshinan, you can now defeat it quickly. She was pleased, but before she could do a thing, she asked the knight if the camera was ready so that she could take action. After getting confirmation, she struck a charming pose, cast her skill, fire enchantment, and charged at the mummy monster, destroying it completely. Once again, she took a nice pose for the camera and said, How are ya? It's Hoshinan. Today, I'll be raiding an undiscovered portal, but guess what? I defeated it with one attack of my sword. Unexpectedly, it was a lot easier. It turned out that this young blonde-haired girl was a portal streamer and a promising YouTuber just like me. The knight in the party was her channel manager. All that took place here was witnessed by Akoma and Satsuki, who had arrived a moment ago. Satsuki was excited because she was a fan of this YouTuber. More importantly, this girl was one of the streamers who had done a video about Satsuki and Akoma, named, anonymous pair of rising stars who apprehended a serial killer. But as excited as she was, she realized that Akoma wasn't happy in the slightest, remembering that he had told her before that he doesn't like portal streamers. At this moment, the cameraman noticed that there were two individuals standing in the background, spoiling the video as only their feet were captured. Hoshinan noticed them too, so she called up to them, hoping they could step aside as she had put so much effort into shooting this video. Akoma didn't argue with her about that. He came down but as he didn't hold what she was doing in high regard. He rebuked her a little, you are certainly courageous to claim that you beat the monster in a single blow when it was already dying. She felt embarrassed by this. For people like us, it is within our work ethic to not lie or trick our subscribers, so getting caught red-handed lying is a disaster. She immediately tried to brush it off by asking her manager if the previous recorded video could be used, to which he wanted to reply that with a little effort in editing, it would be used. But she wanted to make Akoma feel that he was in the wrong here so that he would never talk about this incident, so she cut her manager's words and exaggerated the situation. Even though I really look cool in these shots, I guess it's impossible to use if there is a third party in the shot. As she said this, she made sure to look as regretful as she could be. Seeing this, Akoma called up to her, hoping to apologize, but she was triggered by the fact that he didn't know her name. Though she was a little popular, shouldn't he be watching her videos? She retorted, don't call me, you. I'm Fujiwara Hoshinan, the streamer Hoshinan, you know. She hoped he would be more respectful after knowing her channel name. Of course, Akoma wouldn't know as he was technically not a person of this timeline, nor did he watch videos about dungeons as he already knew much about them. In the end, she failed to intimidate him with her reputation. Akoma also introduced his party, apologized for ruining her video, and then asked her a question that he was very curious to get the answer to, why are you a portal streamer? This unexpected question surprised her, but still, she answered, it's so obvious, because of money. Nowadays, portal content is exciting and sensational, and a single portal alone can make you a millionaire. More importantly, it is also a way an adventurer can directly become as famous as an idol. Dissatisfied with her answer, he told her in a very cold manner, being an adventurer is more complex and challenging than you think. You better leave this place, as a portal of this level isn't a place for an idol like you. Keep in mind that those who arrive here without any conviction usually end up regretting it. These words were bitter to her, and she was so hurt that she started crying. Seeing this, Satsuki asked Akoma if he didn't think that he went too far, but he responded that he was just really giving her genuine advice. After all, Akoma knew that portals were no joke, as people die in them daily. Of course, her manager wouldn't just stand by. He approached her telling her to calm down and not to care about what haters say. She knew she should ignore haters and tried to do so even now, but she just couldn't. She immediately asked the manager to grab the camera and start filming as she was going to do something interesting. With the camera on, she stood before a coma and challenged him. The challenge was to collect magic crystals, and the one who collected the most after three hours would win. If she lost, she would agree to whatever he asked, but if she won, he would apologize to her and take back what he just said. Additionally, 
She reassured him that there was no need to worry about appearing on her channel as she would censor his eyes with a black line. The title of the video would be, Insignificant Adventurer Who Tried to Instigate a Fight. This wasn't difficult for Akoma, so he accepted her request. Pleased to see him accept the challenge, she confidently said, Let's meet up at the entrance in three hours then. Don't run away now. As she left, her manager questioned her decision, as it seemed to provide no benefit at all. She brushed him off, saying that defeating an adventurer who provoked them would make a great, exciting content. Thus, this month's earnings should be good. More importantly, it was very frustrating to be told off like that, so she ought to put him in his place. Though she said this out loud, inside her heart, this challenge meant a lot. She didn't think there was anyone with greater conviction than her, but things like this are better proven, as talking about them is seen as bluffing. Akoma and Satsuki continued hunting as usual, but the hunt was becoming increasingly easier. At the moment, Akoma only needed one attack to slaughter the mummy monsters. This was because undead monsters are usually slow, and he would float above them using the skill, Inverse Gravity. Then, he would attack with his skill, Meteor Slash, or just a pure Sword Slash under the boost from Double Gravity. He continuously picked up items and now started to worry about where to carry them, as the bag he brought was already full. As they moved forward, Satsuki asked if he really had to accept that challenge, as it was quite clear that she was filming the entire process to provoke him into accepting it. Akoma, however, was as calm as ever. Although he thought it would be pretty bad to have a video of him losing, he didn't think he would lose this challenge even once. He simply hoped that when she lost in a very flashy manner, she would rethink her actions. As they chatted, they entered a strange room with many ancient statues. As soon as they entered, the door closed itself, trapping them inside. It was a dead end. The next moment, a huge statue in the middle, resembling an ancient Egyptian god of wisdom, suddenly came to life. With an ancient, rough voice, it said, Thou shalt take my trial and answer mine questions. Prove thy wisdom. The questions shall continue until thee maketh a mistake. If thou can't answer more than three questions, I shall take thy life. The language it used was so old that it was hard to even understand what it meant. For Akoma, however, it was not that hard at all, and he immediately understood that this was a portal gimmick. Portal gimmicks are special actions and events in certain portals. Most of them are just traps, but some bring great benefits. Since this was a rare portal, the probability of it being just a trap was almost zero. He explained this to Satsuki, who was trembling in fear and confusion. Smiling brightly, he told her, Don't worry, I won't lose in a battle of knowledge. The Statue of Wisdom didn't think he was as smart as he proclaimed himself to be, so it started asking questions. Question number one. What is the total amount of experience needed to level up from level 1 to level 10? Akoma answered, 45, which was correct. Though the answer was correct, Satsuki was horrified as she didn't think anyone would have calculated that. The wisdom statue continued to ask questions, but Akoma answered them all with quick, precise answers. Now, it was the 19th question, but the wisdom statue was in an awkward situation, trying to find a question this guy couldn't answer. What is the magic monster with three faces and four legs? Creepy doll, Akoma answered immediately. This left the statue speechless, wondering if this guy was the real god of wisdom because it couldn't find a question he couldn't answer. Since this trial was set up to continue until he couldn't answer a question, Satsuki and the statue started to wonder if this would continue indefinitely. Besides, they had been there for a very long time, so Satsuki started to beg Akoma to intentionally get one question wrong, which added salt to the wisdom statue's wound. After all, no one likes to hear that their questions are so easy that people need to work hard to get them wrong. The statue immediately asked the next question, question 20, what is the monster that drops the mucus of the green slime? Akoma instantly entered sage mode. The portal that has green slimes in it doesn't exist yet. It's only possible to create one with alchemy skills. Hearing that he got the question correct once again, 
the wisdom statue couldn't understand what was going on at all. It had even tried to ask things that didn't exist so that he could fail, but it bore no results at all. It exclaimed in disbelief, impossible. How can you be this brilliant? This went beyond the statue's limits, and it committed suicide. As it crumbled apart, the entrance opened up, so now they could leave this bizarre room at any time. Now it was time to check the drop item from this unique monster. The drop item was a wristband-sized ring, and the system identified it as a storage ring, a B-rank item. It could store things in a different dimension, and the amount it could store depended on the user's magic power. Reading this, Akoma exclaimed in surprise, it is a really useful item, and it's a super rare item that seldom appears. Akoma understood that this gimmick must be set to reward someone depending on the number of questions they got right. Otherwise, a rare item of this scale couldn't appear in this portal. Satsuki, on the side, still couldn't see why it was so precious, so she asked him if it was really that valuable or if he was just exaggerating. He replied that if he were to sell this storage item, he would get at least 65,000 United States dollars, which shocked her to the core. This amount of money was something huge to her, and seeing it earned just like this defied her logic. Before she could get happy for him, she remembered the challenge from before and sincerely asked, we stayed here for a long time. Do you really think we can beat Hoshinan? Akoma told her that things had become a lot easier now since they no longer needed to worry about carrying the dropped items anymore. Just like that, they started the hunt once again. During their hunt, they encountered several monsters. Of course, they were all of the same kind. It was either mummy monsters, which only required one strike from Akoma to be dealt with, or skeleton knights, for which he needed Satsuki's assistance since they had little resistance to his physical attack. With that being said, all these monsters were so simple, so beating them wasn't difficult at all. Since they were fighting non-stop, Satsuki's skill, Mana Drain, played a major role in restoring their mana, enabling them to keep moving forward, slaughtering monsters with ease, and amassing items like there was no tomorrow. Through all this hunting, Akoma was able to level up three times, reaching level 33. Of course, they didn't stop, as Akoma believed they still had plenty of time to go undead hunting. On Hoshinin's side, they finally killed a mummy monster after a long battle, but this time it really took a lot from them. Hoshinin thought that these mummy monsters were not easy to deal with. Their power was really not to be underestimated. Her manager, on the other hand, was really uneasy. He told her that at the moment, they had only managed to beat two of these monsters. Normally, this result would be satisfactory since it was an unexplored portal, but this time it was a challenge, and he feared they might not be able to win at this pace. Seeing how angry she became after hearing this, he reluctantly continued, those two are mostly struggling as well, but what will you do if we lose? She thought about this a little and said that maybe she could give some money to him to act like he lost. Hearing this, her manager instantly tried to persuade her that fake videos were really no good, but he couldn't get her to understand. At that moment, Akoma and Satsuki appeared before them. Seeing her sitting down, Akoma laughed out loud, saying, it seems like you have the time to take a break. Seeing that she was caught red-handed, she immediately attempted to divert their focus by asking them how their crystal collection was going. She mentioned that she still had plenty of time left but also suggested that if Akoma apologized now, she could forgive him. She had realized the monsters here were strong and her chances of winning were infinitely close to zero so if she could trick him into accepting defeat, it would be great. Akoma didn't talk much. Instead, he took all the magic crystals and items collected out of the storage ring. The sight of all these magic crystals and rare items shocked her greatly, causing her to exclaim, you must be kidding me. What's with this amount of magic crystals and items? Also, what's with that ring's power? But Akoma had no time to answer all her questions. He only repeated her earlier words. If she apologized now, he would forgive her. Hearing his words, she instantly turned away with determination, saying, the match isn't over yet. Let's go, manager. As they left, Satsuki asked Akoma if he was enjoying bullying her. To this, Akoma sincerely responded, 
I might have really gotten carried away a bit and I hope she wouldn't do anything foolish. Satsuki, having been in life and death situations alongside Akoma, understood his high level of intellect and character. He wasn't someone easily provoked nor one to involve himself in fruitless challenges, but today, he was a bit different. She had been contemplating what could be the cause to no avail, but now she decided to ask him directly, Brother Akoma, do you hold some kind of a grudge against portal streamers? He replied, though it might seem that way, I really do not hold any grudge. It's just that they don't take portals seriously when they make videos, and misinformation about portals could cost lives. Besides, being an adventurer carries the risk of losing one's very life. It's definitely not something you can do in your spare time. If you continue moving forward without conviction or resolve, you will eventually regret it when the time comes. At that moment, Hoshinen was in deep thought. She understood that it was no longer possible to win by just collecting magic crystals. She needed to do something huge, but she still failed to figure out exactly what that was. While thinking this, her manager approached her, saying their situation was a dead end with no way out as their MP was running low. The better decision would be to give up and go back. Hoshinin couldn't just give up like this, so she insisted on keeping going, saying, we haven't gotten any good footage either, so maybe a big monster would be good. It turned out Akoma had misjudged her, her resolve was simply unshakable. Just like me, the reason she makes videos had little to do with money. The reason and source of her resolve were so deep that she couldn't tell anyone, and it all started eight years ago. At that time, a portal disaster occurred, which meant monsters left portals and ravaged the cities. The world was in absolute chaos as many portal disasters happened simultaneously. Hoshinen, who was just a young girl, had to watch as terrible monsters mercilessly killed her father. She could do nothing but run away with her brother, leaving her father behind to be eaten alive. As she ran away, she felt pretty much all negative emotions, powerlessness, helplessness, and even blamed herself for not being able to save her father. Even after she arrived at the shelter, those emotions didn't fade away. She watched the news, but nothing could make her forgive herself. She hated herself and hated the feeling of being powerless. But at that time, she saw a strong adventurer on the news saying, I believe it would be better if I could become someone's courage in the face of all these tragedies. These words helped her greatly. Though she wasn't as arrogant as to believe she could be as strong as this adventurer, she firmly believed that many people were like her, sad, hopeless, and miserable. That's when her resolve was born, I want to give courage to the people I can reach. With that determination, she started working hard from the ghetto, starting her YouTube channel. Now she has 100,000 subscribers, which is a high number. It's 100 times bigger than my subscribers, so guys, subscribe now so that we can catch up to her. With all the sweat and tears she put into her work until now, she absolutely wouldn't allow anyone to say she doesn't have resolution or conviction. But all of this couldn't be said out loud, after all, she was the encouragement, so she had to stay happy for others. At this moment, they heard a loud, incomprehensible noise not far from them. She immediately understood that this was a different monster from the ones they had seen before. She ran toward the origin of that sound, hoping this monster would be beatable. Her two followers chased after her, preparing to fight this unknown monster. But when they arrived, they were bewildered by the sight before them. The monster they found wasn't an ordinary monster but a majestic, unique monster resembling an ancient god of execution, holding a killing weapon in each of its four hands. At the moment, it was about to deliver a finishing blow to a hopeless adventurer it had caught. Hoshinin was stunned for a moment, not understanding why the portal boss was here of all places, as it was supposed to be deep within the portal. Somehow, it had left the boss room and come to the middle part of the portal, which was unheard of before. More importantly, the moment Hoshinen saw it, she immediately understood that she couldn't win against this monster at all. She was only level 33 while this monster's level was higher. It turned out that this majestic monster was no other than the portal boss, Necromancer Pharaoh, level 40. At this moment, 
Her manager told her that it appeared someone had lured the portal boss up here, fleeing from the boss room. But they weren't capable of killing this monster yet, so they should escape now. The cameraman also agreed, saying, it shouldn't keep chasing us if we run to a narrow path. But Hoshinin couldn't leave. She saw the horrified adventurer who was about to be killed and at that moment, the adventurer was begging them to save her as they were her last hope. Thinking about leaving her to die brought back memories of the time when she left her father to die and escaped with her younger brother, making her feel the unpleasant feeling of powerlessness she hadn't felt in a long time. Will she flee again just like before? Of course not. She immediately charged, blocking the monster's attack and ultimately saving the life of this unknown adventurer. At this moment, she said, sorry, I can't leave with you. You too, take this woman and run away quickly. I'll keep him busy. But the next moment, her party members joined her in the battle. Blocking an attack from the boss monster, her manager said, after all, I'm your number one fan. How could I possibly run away now? But Pharaoh had four arms and delivered two more consecutive blows, and her manager was already down. The cameraman rushed to protect them with his huge magic shield. Unfortunately, his shield in the presence of Pharaoh's repetitive onslaught was akin to tofu. It shattered completely, leaving the three defenseless in the presence of the executioner. At that moment, Hoshinin realized she was lacking in every aspect compared to this boss monster, be it speed or strength so she had no way out at all. Pharaoh moved his four arms in a very harmonious manner, like playing the instrument of death, preparing to finish her with a single blow. She noticed she couldn't avoid this attack, so she simply closed her eyes. Even with her unwavering resolve, facing death is still a scary thing. But the inevitable body-shattering pain never came. When she opened her eyes, she saw Akoma talking her out again. You were too reckless, he said. It turned out that a moment ago, when she was about to be crushed by Pharaoh's killing assault, Akoma appeared in an instant and saved her. At this moment, she was in his arms, floating in the air as he had used his skill, inverse gravity, to save her. Finding herself safe and sound in the arms of one whom she perceived as a hater before was a little confusing. She asked him why he came to save her. He explained that after they parted ways last time, he felt uneasy, thinking that she might do something stupid to win, so he came after her. On the way, he met a fleeing adventurer that she had saved, who told him her situation. Changing his tone to a gentle one, no longer needing to be harsh to her just because she was a streamer, he said, I guess I lost the challenge, so I'll take back what I said before about you not having resolve. Of course. Pharaoh wouldn't allow a sweet time in his presence. This wasn't a picnic or a date, so he launched a long-range spear attack at them, hoping to pierce their guts. Normally, in the air, flexibility and mobility are super reduced, thus Pharaoh thought this would kill them or at least severely wound them with 100% certainty. Fortunately, Akoma could manipulate gravity with his skill, Gravity Moiety, allowing him to deflect this lethal spear with ease. At this time, Satsuki successfully landed an attack with her Shadow Ball, but it simply had no effect at all, causing her to be shaken. Apparently, this monster's defense was crazily high. This time, Akoma landed safely on the ground. After his analysis, he said, we are in a pretty bad situation. The enemy is a high-ranking portal boss, and we can't run away since we have two heavily injured people. Our chances aren't that great. Fearing that he was going to suggest abandoning the two, she interrupted him, those two came with me because I asked them to, thus I can't just run away myself. Understanding what she was getting at, Akoma reassured her, don't worry. Although I enjoy fights that have a good chance of success, I don't hate disadvantageous fights too much either. Satsuki, please restore Hoshinin's MP. I'll keep its aggro on me until you're done. Akoma was well aware that this boss pharaoh, unlike the mad clown boss from before, wasn't an opponent you could beat easily relying on strategies alone. However, when he first met Hoshinin, he noticed she used fire enchantment, so she must be a magic swordsman, meaning she could also use skills like heal. If so, she could use heal while Satsuki used mana transfer. 
Over time, everyone would eventually recover. Until then, he must buy time. With this goal in mind, Akoma charged at the boss monster. Using his skill Gravity Moiety, his agility increased greatly, and he attacked the boss. Akoma understood that his move was lacking in attack power, but since the goal was to seek attention and keep the boss busy, it was simply perfect. However, as he engaged with the boss, he found that due to the high level difference between them, dodging was getting harder and harder. He realized that his skill Gravity Moiety alone wouldn't keep him alive for long. Fortunately, in hope of contributing to the fight, the manager, who was barely conscious, used the skill haste on him, which also boosted his speed. With two skills boosting his speed, Akoma became extremely fast, dodging all of Pharaoh's attacks effortlessly. It was precisely at this time the cameraman, who was knocked out before, woke up and witnessed super agile Akoma dodging the boss monster's onslaught like a breeze in the sea with beautiful swift movements. He thought it would be a pity not to record this extraordinary art of fight, thus he started doing his job, which is, of course, filming this epic fight. The video was just so beautiful. As planned, Akoma continued dodging and occasionally attacking, but the level difference was just too great, and its defense was so good that he could barely do any damage. He understood that it was impossible for him alone to vanquish this enemy. Fortunately, Satsuki had just finished restoring Hoshinin's MP, and the two of them joined the battle, which changed the situation greatly. Now that it was 3 versus 1, the pressure of the battle Akoma faced was drastically reduced, and he was able to dodge its multiple attacks with ease. However, they still couldn't find an opening. At this point, Akoma approached a nearby statue. Using his skill, Gravity Moiety, he reduced the gravity force on it, allowing him to effortlessly throw the statue at Pharaoh as if it were a piece of stone. Of course, Pharaoh was able to effortlessly block it, but in doing so, he was slightly distracted. This distraction created a gap, and Akoma commanded Satsuki to attack its head. Utilizing the opening well, Satsuki landed a huge shadow ball on its head. Though this attack didn't do much, Akoma learned something significant. The fact that it had a hard face covering armor implied that it had something needing protection beneath, which was definitely its weakness. As Satsuki landed an attack, Hoshinin thought she could take advantage while Pharaoh was focused on Satsuki. However, when she charged with her piercing sword, she was blocked by one of its four arms. She noticed that even with a 3 versus 1 advantage, it was still difficult to get closer, as it basically had no openings thanks to its four arms. At this moment, Akoma called out to her, I'll create an opening, then you break its mask with a magic skill. The reason he asked this of her was that he knew one skill, her magic swordsman class supposed to have, called Break. Though it takes a while to charge up, it has the power to penetrate even the toughest of armors. Though she doubted that he could really create an opening, she complied with Akoma's command and started to charge up her skill, Break. At this moment, Akoma charged at Pharaoh and used his skill, Gravity Binding, to bind its two arms together. As it struggled to break the bindings, Hoshinin instantly charged at it with her skill, Break, ultimately breaking its face covering armor and revealing its ugly monstrous face. This made Pharaoh so angry that it wanted to use its ultimate skill to brutally kill these adventurers. The problem was that this move takes some time to get ready, plus Akoma had anticipated it. He immediately used his skill, Inverse Gravity, positioning himself on the ceiling above Pharaoh. Though Pharaoh didn't think it was good for him, he didn't have the time to react because the next moment, Akoma descended upon him like a falling meteor. Just like that, Pharaoh was pulverized by Akoma's skill, Meteor Slash. The subjugation of the grave of the old kin's portal boss, the necromancer Pharaoh, was completed. The system notified, you have gained 1,874 XP. You have leveled up from level 33 to level 35. You have gained 9 SP. Akoma was very satisfied with this. Not only that, but the boss dropped a staff. The system identified it as the Staff of the Cursed King, a C-rank item adding 16 magic power. As a Staff of a King who gained the power of immortality, 
it also drastically increases the power of dark magic. This staff was very suitable for Satsuki, and to her, it would be a cheat code as shamans were basically dark mages who used the power of curses. Drastically increasing dark power improves their abilities immensely. To Satsuki, this cursed staff was akin to a balance breaker, essentially a loophole in the system. The only problem was, since they conquered this portal with the help of Hoshinin's party, Akoma wondered how she intended to share the gains. But she immediately told him that since Akoma and Satsuki fought the portal boss to save their lives, she had no claim to the magic crystal or the dropped item, so he should do as he pleased. Akoma was so pleased with the gains. Originally, he didn't plan to fight the boss, as defeating it would make the dungeon disappear, which he didn't want because he wanted to collect more items from this rare portal. But now he thought it couldn't get any better. As he presented the cursed staff to Satsuki, she was a little reluctant, asking if it was really okay for her to accept it, as it was very overpowered, providing benefits that transcended its rank, just like the balance breaker. On the market, it would fetch more than $50,000. But Akoma told her that this was exactly why she should accept it so she could be as strong as him. After all, they were comrades. Hearing this, she was pleased to no end, and she accepted the cursed staff as her own. At the moment, Hoshinin was healing her teammates. When she finished, she awkwardly told Akoma that she had let him have all the rewards, so now they should be even. Akoma understood that she was talking about the previous challenge and responded, I said it was my loss earlier, so I take back my words as promised. You're an adventurer with unwavering resolve. She really liked hearing this, but being a Sunere girl, she pretended she didn't care, saying, as long as you know it. At this moment, Akoma and Satsuki noticed that Hoshinin's challenge stemmed not from arrogance but from being a Sunere. Akoma told her that she was a good adventurer, but if she aimed to be great, she must follow the advice he was about to give. Before he could continue, her manager interrupted, saying Hoshinin needed money, not to play hero. At the moment, she was burdened with making a living for her five younger brothers and her mother, whose foot was injured during a portal disaster. Since her father was no longer alive, as the firstborn, she had to take responsibility for them. Though Akoma was like an orphan living alone, he understood the heavy responsibility she bore. He immediately apologized, I'm really sorry. I was acting superior while meddling in your business. But Hoshinin rebuked both of them. She strictly forbade her manager from sharing her personal affairs with others. To Akoma, she said she wasn't doing this out of necessity but because everyone was scared of portal disasters, and she wanted to make people smile in her own way. Hearing her sincere feelings, Akoma smiled gently and said, it is a great goal, and from now on, I'm rooting for you. After they left the portals, her manager told Hoshinin that they had sustained a heavy loss. Their equipment was broken, they didn't collect many magic crystals, nor did they record a promising video so they were likely to suffer in the upcoming days. He thought it would have been better to take a magic crystal from the boss monster from Akoma. However, Hoshinin said she wouldn't accept anything out of pity or charity. She felt they were indebted to Akoma for saving them and should have given him some money of their own. Understanding that money was the problem, the cameraman immediately reassured them, saying he had shot a killer video that he thought would go viral. He showed them a recording of Akoma fighting the boss monster. One day later, Akoma and Satsuki sat in the guild cafeteria as they usually did, doing some research and hoping to find a suitable portal. Satsuki called him, saying he should look at a YouTube video she had found. At first, Akoma refused, thinking that finding information was more important, but as he glanced at it, he realized it was about him. It turned out that after they parted ways with Hoshinin, she made a video claiming to have discovered the secret identity of the strongest unknown adventurer known for solving a series of murders. The video went viral, getting more than a million views in just one day, with many comments asking for more information about his class and other details. Akoma was speechless. Recently, he had been feeling like people were watching him, and now he knew this video was the cause. Remembering that they had exchanged phone contacts, he dialed Hoshinin. 
in her room, Ho Shinin was very happy reviewing the performance of her recent video. It had exceeded her expectations, causing her to celebrate joyously. At this moment, her cell phone rang, and it was Akoma calling her. She wondered if Akoma called because he liked the video, but contrary to her expectation, Akoma was actually angry, asking why she had posted his video without asking first. She awkwardly responded, Don't you remember? We agreed that if I won, you would let me upload a video of you. But if you really hate it, I can delete it. Akoma thought for a moment. He really wanted her to delete the video, but he remembered what her manager had told him about her tough situation. So he changed his mind and said, I just wanted to complain a little. Hearing this, Hoshinin rejoiced, as she didn't want to delete it. At the moment, this video was very important to her. She smiled brightly and asked Akoma if he could make more videos with her, but he just hung up without answering. Akoma was shocked by her shamelessness. She really wanted him to make more videos with her, but he decided to act as if he didn't hear it. After some time, Akoma had finished his research, but his contemplation didn't lessen. At the moment, he was thinking about a super rare item that he wanted to get his hands on. He realized it would be difficult, but if he could get it, it might change the course of history in a big way. After coming to this conclusion, it was time to go to the receptionist to upgrade his rank to C rank, as he had already reached level 35, the required level for C rank adventurers. The process itself didn't take long as expected. When he arrived before the beautiful receptionist, she immediately confirmed that his level was above 35 and he had a good record as well. Though she didn't understand how he was able to achieve this in such a short time, she did her job and provided him with a C rank certificate, proving that Akoma had successfully been raised to C rank. As they left, Satsuki was so happy for him and congratulated him for becoming a C rank adventurer and the fastest person in history to reach C rank. According to her, this achievement had stunned many people, including the beautiful receptionist who wondered if Akoma had a cheat or something. Normally, it would take years to advance to C rank, and C rank adventurers or higher are very respected by everyone around them. But Akoma did it in a very short time. With a happy face, she exclaimed that considering how powerful and intelligent he is, he simply deserved to be the fastest person in history to reach rank C, and she would do her best to follow his example. Akoma, on the other hand, didn't think highly of this. His goal was to become the most powerful adventurer in existence, and he still fell short. Therefore, he saw no big deal in this achievement and told Satsuki that this was nothing but a starting point. He assured her that she herself would soon achieve rank C, as she was currently level 32, with only three more levels left before she could upgrade her rank. In addition, he told her that his true goal was to reach B rank by the end of the month. This shocked Satsuki, as it was quite unexpected. She exclaimed, B rank? That is obviously impossible. Getting B rank in a month is unheard of. Maybe the number of people who can actually do that is one in a million. Akoma understood that this was hard to achieve, so he explained to her in detail. There is an item I want to obtain, and the place it will appear in, is a place you can't enter unless you're B rank or higher. He continued, saying that this item would be appearing in a high difficulty portal, Illusion Library, and it is a drop from the boss monster, the Ring of Wisdom. Hearing this, Satsuki understood that Akoma wasn't joking about achieving B rank in a month. Moreover, knowing him, if he said this, he likely had already planned everything about how he would achieve it. She was only surprised that he knew about another drop from a boss that hadn't been beaten yet, so she asked if he knew this impossible to get information thanks to the rare item he had talked about before. Akoma affirmed her speculation and told her that the Ring of Wisdom was very important because it might be related to the root of the portal phenomenon. By possessing this unique item, one could get a better understanding of the portal phenomenon or maybe even learn how to end it. This unexpected information shocked Satsuki greatly. Akoma continued in a very serious manner, but I will just be dragging you along with my personal goals. I think it'll be hard without you, so if I could trouble you this time. At this moment, Satsuki interrupted Akoma, who seemed to have difficulties asking her to go with him into this high difficulty portal. Brother Akoma, 
Don't worry. Leave it to me. I'm really happy that you're relying on me. With her approval, he immediately showed her the list of portals they would be tackling, as he had already planned. By clearing these portals, they could rack up achievements, which are very important for upgrading to B rank, and level up at the same time. After that, they started clearing portals one after another, beating portal bosses like they were cannon fodder. Starting with the Feast of the Savage Tribe level 30 portal, then the Lake of the Mermaid level 30 portal, and other level 30 portals like the Nest of the Mixed Insects portal, they cleared all these portals in just two weeks. At this moment, Satsuki had already reached level 35 and could be upgraded to C-Rank. Satsuki was very happy to finally become a C-Rank adventurer. Before she met Akoma, she was treated like trash in her party and never thought she could reach this height. She decided to tell Akoma what she thought after challenging so many level 30 portal bosses. I know they were bosses with lower levels, but shouldn't it have been more difficult to beat them? I thought they were supposed to be a little stronger. Akoma responded that it wasn't that they were weak. Their defense and attack power were high, but at this level, their movements were still very simple, and their skills weren't anything special or crazy, making it easier to beat them. What he told her was the absolute truth, but when he chose those portals, he thoroughly examined all the portals that were easy for them. Thus, they were able to clear many portals without any difficulty. Now, they had more than five portal achievements above level 30, and he thought this should be enough for his promotion to B rank. So it was time to go to the guild for this. One must know that to get a promotion to B rank, levels alone aren't enough. You need to have achievements that show you are capable of defeating at least level 30 boss monsters. Many adventurers level up by repeatedly fighting low-level monsters. It takes them ages, but in the end, they still level up. The only problem is those adventurers can't fight monsters close to their level. They remain weak in the face of monsters close to level 30. So this was a way to weed out those people. Only by having enough achievements can one become a B-rank adventurer. One must know that getting achievements usually takes longer than leveling up to levels close to 40. That is because to get an achievement, one has to clear a portal, which goes without saying that one would fight a boss monster closer to his level. This is very difficult, as most adventurers don't even want to go deep into the portal because boss monsters are very dangerous, and many adventurers lose their lives to them. After arriving at the Adventurer Guild, Akoma requested a promotion to B-Rank. The receptionist checked his level and achievements and found out he really met all the criteria. Though she didn't understand how someone could have so many achievements in such a short time, she awkwardly said, it certainly seems like you can be promoted, but we have a strict inspection process for B rank and above, so we will contact you in a few days after the inspection. But at that very moment, someone arrived. Seeing that Akoma was in the process of becoming a B rank adventurer, he exclaimed in a very loud voice, I can't believe this. This little brat is a B rank. When Akoma looked back to see who it was, he realized that this adventurer had a guild badge indicating that he was a contracted adventurer for the guild. Contracted adventurers work for the guild, helping in portal management, responding to portal disasters, or even giving information about unexplored portals. Their influence within the guild is rather huge, so they are not to be underestimated. This adventurer's name was Oga, a B-rank contracted adventurer for the guild. The moment he arrived at the reception, he immediately declared that there was no way this kid was a B-rank candidate. To this, the beautiful receptionist responded, but he's almost at level 40, and he also has quite a few achievements in intermediate rated portals. Hearing this, Oga momentarily fell into disbelief. He knew how difficult it was to accumulate achievements. It took him more than four years. After that, he finally became the first B-rank adventurer at this branch, ultimately grabbing all the opportunities in his way. But now, this kid just appeared out of nowhere, looking all scrawny, yet he was able to beat a bunch of portal bosses. How could this be? He immediately declared disdainfully, I just won't accept it. How can a newbie with less than a year of experience be a B-rank adventurer? Akoma, seeing pure hate in Oga's eyes, 
understood that this guy wanted to cause him trouble. More than anything, since Oga was one of the few contracted B-rank adventurers in the guild, his interference would be a huge problem, and Akoma wouldn't be able to get promoted. To make it more troublesome, one could only apply for promotion from the branch located where they lived, as shown on their certificate of residence, so it was impossible for Akoma to leave and apply from another branch. Akoma understood that he had no way of avoiding this troublesome guy and that it was likely he wouldn't be promoted. But thinking about how he and Satsuki had worked hard in the past few days, he was reluctant to just accept this. So he decided to confront Oga head on. Sir Oga, right? If you want to refute my application, I'd like to hear an appropriate reason. Hearing his question, Oga approached Akoma face to face, hoping to intimidate him a little with his furious expression, while saying, your time in the portals is short. Portals aren't something for little kids like you, and B-rank adventurer isn't a title that we should give away so easily. Are you looking down on adventurers? As he said the last sentence, he released a bit of aura to make his point clearer. Of course, this wasn't enough to intimidate Akoma, as he had seen worse, but Satsuki and other onlookers felt cold sweat running down their backs. Many onlookers started to comment on the situation, most of them saying that Akoma was going to end up bad for daring to stand his ground against Oga, while others said they felt pity for Akoma. Akoma, on the other hand, was as calm as ever. Since this guy dared to act clever in front of Akoma, he deserved to be given facts that would make him regret opposing Akoma in the first place. The minimum age requirement to become an adventurer is 17. Do you have any idea how many 17-year-olds have become B-rank? Oga wasn't very intelligent to begin with, so he had no idea why Akoma was asking him this. Even if he were clever, we know the fate of the last being who attempted to challenge Akoma's intelligence. It was the Statue of Wisdom, and in the end, it committed suicide after failing to gauge the limit of Akoma's knowledge. Seeing that Oga was at a loss for words, Akoma continued with genuine facts, it's been five years since the portals appeared, and at this moment, six people in all of Japan have advanced to B rank in less than a year. So, are you saying that all of their promotions were mistakes? Oga was speechless, and it was the first time he had heard something like this. To him, it was incomprehensible that one could level up and get promoted to B rank within a year. But this kid wouldn't dare lie here, so it was likely to be the truth. But how? His confusion wasn't unjustifiable. Normal adventurers take a long time to level up, as they tend to hunt weak monsters and form parties to challenge powerful monsters, which gives them few experience points. On the contrary, crazily talented adventurers like Akoma tend to fight monsters that are the same level or higher than themselves. They understand that as long as you can do that, achieving a high level in a short time is possible. Akoma continued, my level and achievements meet the requirements for B-rank promotion. If you're going to use my experience as a reason to reject my application, you need to give a good explanation. Akoma continued hitting Oga with irrefutable facts, emphasizing that rules shouldn't be based on someone's feelings or instincts. All these facts made Oga lose his ground, as he felt as if he had confronted a law enforcer rather than a newbie adventurer. To make matters worse, the receptionist actually confirmed that what Akoma had said thus far was accurate. She too, was surprised because she had to check the documents and guild data to find this out. At this moment, everyone around could tell that Oga was on the losing end, embarrassing himself before a youngster. This was especially true for Satsuki, who realized that Akoma could dominate even in the face of a veteran adventurer. It became very clear to her that Akoma had vast knowledge and charisma. Oga could even hear some of them murmuring about how lame he was at this moment. This infuriated him more, as he thought this kid was making a fool out of him. He vowed to himself that he wouldn't forgive Akoma and would make sure Akoma regretted messing with him. With this in mind, he asked for more information about Akoma from the receptionist. Upon hearing that Akoma's class was a rare magic class, he rejoiced, thinking that although he hadn't heard of this class before, it was likely that Akoma had a strong vanguard fighting in the front, while he supported with his magic from the rear. 
Only this could explain his high leveling speed. He immediately regained his overbearing stature and said, I was indeed a little stubborn, rejecting your application without thinking about it properly. However, there are conditions. I'll see if you're a B-ranked adventurer myself. Come to the guild training ground if you have the resolve. Following Oga, they arrived at the guild training ground, and many people came following them, understanding that the only thing that could happen here was a mock battle. Most of these onlookers felt more pity for Akoma because they had watched a few mock battles of Oga against different adventurers, and the common outcome was that Oga's opponent would be left half dead. They believed that Akoma too would end up like the others. After Akoma and Oga arrived at the training ground, Oga proudly declared, I'll let you be promoted if you convince me in a mock battle, but if you can't, I will reject it. At this moment, Oga was thinking that since he was a higher level compared to Akoma and his class, Beast Warrior, which is a hidden class specializing in strength, harnessing the power of beasts, Akoma, who is a magic class, the worst of all classes, wouldn't be able to resist him at all. Especially now that he wasn't with a strong vanguard, who carries him in dungeons, no matter how he looked at it, he would win in all possible aspects. The only thing left was to find the best way to humiliate Akoma and leave him in a half-dead state that would prevent Akoma from ever being an adventurer. While Oga fantasized about his uncertain victory, Akoma was assigning skill points. Using 15 SP, he upgraded gravity magic to level 3 from level 2 and upgraded gravity manipulation from level 3 to level 4 using 25 SP. With this, he was quite sure that he would be able to hold his own against Oga as his control of gravity on himself had improved significantly. Seeing that Akoma was done with assigning his skill points, Oga endorsed him, saying that it was a better decision to assign the points before the battle. But since some accidents are unavoidable during the mock battle, an even greater decision would have been to give up rather than fighting the inevitable. To this, Akoma simply thanked him for his discouraging advice and said that he was ready for the mock battle. Hearing that Akoma was going to fight till the end pleased Oga to no end, as he intended to beat him so hard that even his mother wouldn't recognize him, turning him into an example for all those who dared to stand up to him. Standing in an imposing manner with his great sword on his shoulder, he told Akoma with contempt, you can come whenever you're ready. Of course, I'll restrict the use of my skills but you can use yours however you like. At the moment, he was convinced of his absolute victory, as it was a well-known fact that magic class holders are very weak, especially in one versus one battles. Also, he was almost 10 levels higher than Akoma, so he truly believed that this was the time to put this brat in his place. But the next moment, Akoma used his skill, Gravity Moiety, significantly boosting his speed. As if he teleported, he instantly appeared before Oga, attacking with a sword slash. Oga narrowly dodged this attack with a horrified expression, wondering what was going on with Akoma's speed as it was not a speed that fit his level. Akoma unleashed a few more consecutive and coordinated attacks. Though Oga was still able to block all of them, he found it hard as Akoma was so elusive with his speed that it felt like he was attacking from all directions. This angered Oga, making him attack with a strong sword slash. But as he attacked, he couldn't see Akoma before him anymore. This put him at a loss, as during the previous attacks, he could feel that Akoma wasn't ordinary, and now he couldn't see him. He felt a great sense of crisis, as a cold sweat ran down his back because Akoma could strike at any moment now. Just as he thought this, Akoma, who had used his skill, inverse gravity, to jump above Oga, charged at him with an uppercut knee strike, knocking him to the ground. Oga was hit so hard that his eyes went white for a moment as he spat a mouthful of blood. It was at this moment that Oga understood the situation he had put himself into. Akoma's fighting style, combos, and even knee kicks were not something that a newbie could demonstrate. So who the heck was this guy anyway? Oga wasn't the only one who was unable to comprehend what was going on. Even the onlookers who were watching or recording the fight were confused at the moment because what they were witnessing right now was the polar opposite of what they were expecting. The Oga known as the strongest adventurer of this guild was being pulverized by an unknown newbie. 
Still, some of them believed that Ogo was probably going easy on Akoma since it was just a rank-up inspection. This also made more sense because, until now, Oga didn't use any skills as he had promised. Oga, on the other hand, was really trying his best in this fight as he had no intention of approving Akoma. It was so hard for him to become a B-rank, so how could he let a kid have the same authority as him so effortlessly? However, no matter how hard he tried, he couldn't hit Akoma at all. This made him so angry as it was supposed to be him humiliating this brat, not the other way around. At this moment, the contemptuous expression from before was nowhere to be seen on his face, replaced by a complex emotion with fear dominating. Even now, he couldn't accept the fact that a low-level youngster could be this tough. Akoma, however, was pretty calm. Even at the start of this conflict, though Oga did release his aura to pressure and intimidate Akoma, in the end, Akoma felt nothing as he had faced too many people with more sinister and murderous auras like Zeba. So, Oga's aura felt rather refreshing to Akoma. It didn't even feel dark or murderous at all. Simply put, Akoma never felt like Oga was a threat or an enemy to fight seriously. Even so, Akoma thought that Oga saying he would fight without using his skills was just disrespectful, thus he intended to show him that it was a mistake. At this moment, Akoma used his skill, double gravity, significantly boosting his attack power, and clashed blades with Oga once again. With this collision, Oga felt Akoma's sword suddenly become heavier, causing him a little confusion. But within this short moment, Akoma had already jumped behind him, holding his sword to Oga's back. If he wanted, Oga would be down by now. This was the checkmate. All the onlookers celebrated in unison as this battle was great and unpredictable. None of them thought that Akoma would overwhelm a B-rank adventurer even for a moment. The only one who had hope in him was Satsuki, but she was still very happy for his victory as winning against a veteran B-rank adventurer is no easy task at all. But at this very moment, when Akoma and everyone thought that the fight was already over, Oga thought differently. He couldn't accept this unexpected outcome, so he suddenly used his skill, Beast Claws, attacking Akoma. This attack was so unexpected, and the distance was so close, plus Akoma had let his guard down thinking that the fight was over. Though Akoma sensed the attack, he didn't have enough time to fend it off completely, and he was pushed back a few meters. This shocked everyone around, and all the onlookers started to accuse Oga of being a scumbag as they believed he violated not only the rule he set himself, saying he wouldn't use skills but also dared to attack when it was quite clear that the fight had ended. At this moment, more than anyone, Oga was shocked the most. He had sneak attacked Akoma with one of his powerful skills, and being that close, he was convinced that he would land a critical hit. But somehow, Akoma managed to react in time, reducing the damage greatly. He was only slightly injured by that surprise attack. Furthermore, Akoma didn't look phased by any of this at all. Akoma proceeded by asking with a calm face devoid of hatred or anxiety, what's wrong? Are you still going to continue this rank promotion match? But I think that's plenty enough for a test. Oga saw how calm Akoma was with no complaints whatsoever and finally understood that Akoma had never regarded him highly at all, as if he was looking down on him. This made Oga feel even more bitter. He was getting pressured by a kid whose level was lower than his. He feared that if this spread, the guild would not ignore it. More importantly, no matter what, he didn't want to recognize this kid because he hated his characters. So much confidence, the strong gaze as if he could see through everything, and the way he carried himself as if he had everything under control. He immediately laughed out loud and said, it's true it may seem meaningless to continue. Sir Akoma, your application is rejected because you may be a little clever, but you lack a decisive blow. I even let you push me back on purpose, giving you a chance. Still, there was no decisive blow, and that won't be forgiven by any monsters you'll have to face. The fact that you were injured by my skill proves that fact. You could have reacted better immediately. The onlookers were at a loss for words hearing this. Just how shameless could one be? A few even started sharing their thoughts on the matter, 
saying that it appeared Oga never intended to recognize Akoma in the first place. But a single glance from Oga was enough to close their mouths, fearing the consequence of attracting Oga's hatred. However, not everyone was so afraid, because the next moment, Itsunomiya, claiming to be Akoma's best friend, shouted out loud expressing his thoughts on this outcome, aren't you embarrassed? Akoma was winning from beginning to end, and you could only land an attack because you broke the rule of not using your skills. Itsunomiya wanted to continue, determined to seek justice for Akoma, but Akoma called him off. He appreciated his help and also asked him to stop arguing as the outcome was already announced. This shocked Itsunomiya, as he didn't understand why Akoma would accept this unfair judgment. Not only him, but Satsuki on the side was also greatly saddened by this. She saw it with her own eyes and was sure that Akoma had won, so why was this happening like this? There shouldn't really be a reason for Oga not to recognize him. Akoma, too, was trying to understand the situation and the real cause of his rejection. He knew that he had no deep enmity with Oga, so he doubted that Oga would go so far just to prove his authority. The only explanation he could come up with was that he didn't save him some face. In the fight, Akoma had the intention of clearly showing the difference in their skills, but all it did was hurt Oga's self-esteem. Akoma thought that he should have considered the fact that Oga was a leader here. Defeating him before everyone would not be good at all, he should have given him some face. This was also why he stopped Itsunomiya because he understood that any more embarrassment would have a more adverse effect on Oga. At this very moment, Serizawa, the deputy chairman of the guild, arrived, asking what happened to cause all this ruckus. Oga quickly responded that he was conducting an examination, a rank promotion task, though it turned out to be a waste of time. Seeing Akoma injured, Serizawa thought that he had overestimated himself and attempted to raise his rank beyond his power. After all, that happens a lot. Without wasting much of his precious time, he told Oga that he had something urgent to discuss and that he should come to his office. Just like that, Oga left, following Serizawa, of course, as he left, he wouldn't forget to show off to Akoma by saying, I guess that's all for the promotion match. I'm actually a very busy person, unlike you. After Oga left, Satsuki approached Akoma and worriedly asked, Brother Akoma, what should we do now? Akoma was also wondering what to do next. He had to get this promotion so that he could go to the Illusion Library for the super unique item, the Ring of Wisdom, which would be a huge opportunity for him. But now that his application was rejected, it looked more like he wouldn't be getting this chance. It's even more troublesome because he couldn't get this promotion from other guild branches. He found this situation a little bothersome, but he didn't intend to give up yet, as there were still two weeks left. He ought to find a way in that time. He responded to Satsuki, We have no choice but to find another way.